Uh, I'm going to go back to when we were in, in Sissonbrook, um, the Sissonbrook um, camp. Um, there was a tungsten mine that the province wanted to put in the middle of, of the woods, and it's about, I guess, two hours from here, so it would be about 200 kilometers from here. No, not two hours, an hour. Anyway, um, the, the province wanted to put a tungsten mine there, and I had worked on this site as an um, archaeological um, liaison between the, um, the texts, the, um, the indigenous texts, and the company. And when I, it was job, you know, it was a job, and it was jobs for the techs also. But uh, when I was out there and I learned more about what the company was doing and what they were going to do, the amount of destruction that was going to happen out there uh, weighed heavily on me every day when I went out there. So I started putting tobacco down every time I went, every morning before. You know, before I'd go, I'd put tobacco down and ask, I asked for guidance as to, you know, how do we, um, how do we stop this? You know, because companies and the province and the federal, federal government was pouring millions and millions of dollars for, into this. And the company was promising people jobs, like lucrative jobs up there. So the, the people of New Brunswick were really behind this. And um, while I was there, um, I had put tobacco down, and I had asked to see the ancestors. And when I did, um, <clears throat> they were really ancient. And they didn't understand tobacco as a form of, of, of offering. They wanted food. They wanted to be fed. The spirits there wanted to be fed. They were hungry. And so, um, so after, the, you know, after that, we kind of talked to the federal government and the provincial government. We had meetings with ministers, and they all just kind of like, um, what do you call that, when they you kind of just like pat people on the head and say, oh, yes, yes, it will do, we'll help you, we'll help you. <laughs> we'll do this for you. I don't know what that's called. Condescending? I don't know. <laughs> that's it. That's the word. Patronizing. And, you know, um, it, was, it was very frustrating. It, it, it felt like they were talking out of uh, both sides of their mouth, you know. Um, so we, we could only do what you know, we were guided to do, which was we had to, we had to go up there and we had to make camps and we had to stay there. We had to use the land again. And we did that in the winter time and there was so many um, people, you know, and so many different players that came into that. And um, when I left there, I left with a sense of, um, of empowerment, knowing, you know, that we could do, we could do more than what we're doing. You know, sometimes we sit back and say, oh, you know, that's just the way it is, or, oh, there's no way you can fight the federal government or the provincial government, you know, and there is, you know, you just have, you just have to want to do it. So, um, getting back to the ancestors, um, when I wasn't listening to them when we were up in Sisson, I got a toothache, you know, I was, I was, and I couldn't understand, you know, what was going on, like my, you know, my tooth is always hurting me, and, and, you know, I'm getting, I can't sleep at night, and I don't know what's going on, and it was the ancestors trying to get my attention, they were trying to tell me what I need to do, and I wasn't listening because, to me, it sounded too hard to do it, you know, to go out there and stay in the middle of the woods. Like I, I, and I was happy, you know, getting a paycheck and, and sleeping in a nice warm bed inside a house, 
you know, I didn't want to go out there, but that's what we needed to do in order to make that stand, in order to make that uh, commitment to the ancestors. And, and so when, when that was done, or when I was done with, with that place, I left there, like I, like I said, I left there with a sense of empowerment. And I knew that, you know, that we could do whatever we, whatever we're guided to do, we're always given the resources and the means to do it. <clears throat> so um, after I left there, I traveled out, out west to BC and I stayed there for three months and I came back home and, and that's when Officer Square, the stuff started um, um, ramping up, I guess. When I came back, that, that tree was still up. The Calithumpian tree was still up. So I would come here um, and, um, you know, just sit here and enjoy the tree, enjoy the birds, enjoy the people, enjoy the grass and stuff. And, and I don't know when they cut it. Do you guys remember when? <laughs> but after that, it was like, you know, they, these people don't understand that are doing this. The city, the people, the mayor, the um, counselors, the um, government, the provincial government, they don't understand, you know, the connection we need. We need to have that connection with the trees. You know, those are our relatives. We need to have the connection with the grass and the birds and the sunshine, and we need fresh air. And they wanted to destroy that for a skating rink, you know, and for a, a the, an amphitheater. I don't even know. <laughs> but it's all concrete and asphalt. You know, you look at the wall now, you know, our grandmothers and grandfathers aren't in the wall anymore. It's concrete. You know, our grandmothers and grandfathers are the rocks. They're not in the wall no more, you know. So we don't have that knowledge within the wall anymore. It's just cold, ugly concrete. So, again, I was happy where I was, you know, I was, I had a, a, a good job and um, teaching and, um, you know, I was out on my porch and sewing and stuff like that and again, I was, I was being bothered. I was being bothered by the ancestors. I could not sleep and, and um, <clears throat> I knew it had to do with this place, but I, I wasn't sure. So one morning, you know, I couldn't sleep, and I woke up 5 o'clock in the morning. And I grabbed my drum, and I came over here. And I grabbed um, um, corn cornmeal. And I came here, you know, and um, I went to the sites that were here, and I put cornmeal around them. And then I felt like it wasn't good enough. It wasn't good enough, so I put um, the cornmeal inside so the ancestors can be fed, you know. And, and then I sang a song. I sang a couple songs, the snake medicine song, the strong woman song. You know, I, I think I sang the grandmother's lullaby. And then I left. I said, there, now let me sleep, you know. And then I left. And I went back to my apartment, and it was cool for like maybe a week, two weeks. And then my friend Ramona had said that she'll be doing ceremony here. And if I wanted to join, I said, yeah, I want to join, you know. And um, so when I came here, you know, I, I had, I think the night before, I already knew what I needed to do because, you know, we can sit, we can go through the same process again. We can sit there, speak to the, um, you know, the city council and, and the mayor, and we can talk to the province. And again, they're going to patronize us, you know, pat us on the head and, oh, yes, yes, we'll take your... We'll take your concerns to, you know, into consideration, you know, and, and actually that's what I was told by, um, I think it was the deputy minister of 
something or other uh, heritage that morning because after we did the ceremony I went to him and, and I was talking about the destruction that was going on with our sites um, with Sisson you know but also with the Marysville site um, that site what you know is uh, the second oldest site in in Atlanta Canada and it's um, it was uh, bulldozed and a road was put over it you know and it was there was no ceremony done you know there was no nothing it, it, they didn't even care that this was a very lucrative and very important site for not only our people for but for all the people you know um, I think they they um, they uh, dated it at like 12,000 years old or 11,000 you know 11,000 years old site and <laughs> they it didn't matter it didn't matter to them you know and then all of the construction that goes on along the river which of course is all indigenous um, of course you're gonna find indigenous artifacts because this is where we live this is this is uh, this is our namesake was the river um, yet you know it wasn't important to people it wasn't even important to our own people so um, I think I had already made up my mind that day that night so when we came here that day and and I think the straw that broke the camel's back was when that short man told me that he would take my consideration you know and I was like no it stops now it stops now and then I grabbed my pipe and I came over here and I did it my own pipe ceremony Ramona had already did one but I did my own over here and that's when I made the decision to stay you know I all I had was a blanket and my pipe you know and my smudge bowl and that was it that's all I came here with you know and and I and I knew that if this was where the ancestors wanted me to be if this is what they wanted me to do then they would provide for me. So I told Ramona, I need, I need a tent, and I need Ron Trombley, Grand Chief, to come here and start a sacred fire for me. And it all happened. You know, that day Ron came and talked to me. You know, he, I think he was kind of like wondering what was it, <laughs> what the heck was going on in my head, but. I, you know, I was, I was guided to be here and protect the ancestors, protect this site, you know, like we did, Sisson. Because um, if, we, if we don't stand up, if we don't stay on the land and use the land in a different way, then people, especially with the, um, the PC government now in power, they're just going to come in and bulldoze everything. All of our sites are going to be bulldozed. They're going to, like the Marysville site, you know, no consideration, no honor for um, the people that were here first. We're on unceded ballistic territory, and they just don't get that. And this is what I'm trying to hammer into their head is, you know, this isn't your land. The province sold this this land to the city <clears throat> for a dollar it's so you know it's so aggravating when I hear things like that like why didn't they give it back to us you know and there's the crow the crow is like yeah <laughs> yeah the crow says yeah why didn't they give it back to us you know give it back to the trees and give it back to the crows and give it back why you know and, and now the mayor wants to build a really, you know, something so unnecessary here. And, and it's um, heartbreaking, especially, you know, when, when they've, especially this part right here, they didn't even do a, 
a, a proper archaeological assessment. They said they did. All they did was get a monitor. And all a monitor does is stand over the hole while the machine is digging to see what they can see. That's not a proper assessment. You know, so right now, Brent Suddy, who's the head of um, archaeology in the province, allows industry, construction companies, the city, um, um, just to and and you know just to bulldoze our heritage, our 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 roots, for the sake of you know for him to get a pat on the head and say, you did a good job, boy, you know? Like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where his head is, you know? And, but it's, it's got to stop, you know? And, and this, for me, because I had that experience in Sisson, I knew it was doable. I knew I could stay here for the winter, you know? We did that in Sisson. Although we had a cabin and a, and a wood stove, <laughs> You know, but we stayed in the trailer until that was built. And, um, you know, so this is where I, I'm at right now is, you know, to make sure that people understand, you know, that this isn't their land. People come here all the time and say, oh, this is city land. <laughs> you know, this belongs to the city or this belongs to the military. You know, no, it doesn't. You know, we never ceded any of our land. This is still our land. And, and I, for one, am appalled at the way they treat the land, you know, so care carelessly, the way they treat the trees. These are our relatives. This is our mother. That's our mother. She provides for us, you know. The trees are our are, are, are relatives. The rocks, the, the, the rocks, the wall that they just took down had the, our oldest relatives, the grandmothers and grandfathers, in, in it. You know, you could see them. You could see their knowledge right there, and, and they just destroyed it. Like it was nothing, you know? And it's, it's, so, <clears throat> it's so heartbreaking, and it's so infuriating at the same time. And so this is, this is why I did, I'm doing what I'm doing, you know? I was guided. And, I'm, you know, with the fire, the fire is, is my rock, I guess, my anchor for being here. It provides, it provides knowledge and it provides um, warmth and light, you know, and, 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 it, and it teaches me how to be, um, how to be committed because I have to make sure that that fire doesn't go out. So every day, you know, like even in the night, I have to get up and make sure that that fire is still going. And that's the only thing that's keeping me going, you know, at times when I feel like I'm here alone, when my own people aren't backing me up, you know. But I also have wonderful people like you, you know, and you, you know, come and and um, and like there are so many people that come here and appreciate what I'm doing. They bring me a coffee and say, "You don't know me. I'm this, you know." And, and here's a coffee, and I appreciate you. And it's it's never my own people, <laughs> but we have, we we learned that lesson in Sisson anyway, you know. So, and I think <clears throat> that's where you know. And the, the weaving of the, you know, the thread comes in. Because if you make a blanket, if you make a quilt, and you make it only out of, let's say, red cloth, yes, it's beautiful, you know? But I think the most beautiful quilt is when you make it out of different, different material. And that's what, that's what comes here. Those are the people that come here. They come from different, there goes a squirrel. <laughs> They come from different walks of life. You know, they come from different experiences. They come from different cultures. They come from different ec economically or social, social, social um, spheres, 
it, yes, or social backgrounds, you know, and economically backgrounds. You know, a lot of the homeless people come here, you know, and they're drawn by the fire because they're not allowed to have fire. The homeless, you know, I had to really fight for that fire, you know, and, and uh, I'm still fighting for it, you know, and, and same with this trailer. I had to really, you know, because they, they blocked, they blocked Officer Square so I wouldn't bring a trailer in. They wanted me to stay in a tent and freeze, you know. They wanted me to go home and, you know, get out of here so we can, we can make a skating rink. <laughs> and, but I put tobacco in the fire, you know, and, and I said, you know, if you want me to stay, help me. And they help me. They continuously help me. You come every Saturday and you bring me goodies, you know, like I can't wait for Saturday. <laughs> you know, and but I also get to talk, you know, I get to learn about you and and the country you came from, you know, Beirut. Yeah. And what's going on there? Like cuz I I didn't understand, you know, why there was so much fighting and what was going on there. And when you came and you wove, you know, you wove that blanket with me. <laughs> you did.